What's going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you a brand new video and we got a few things to get into. Uh, first thing I want to get into, for those of you that don't make it to the end of the video, let me know down in the comments section below for those of you watching, let me know how I sound. Uh, reason being is I just got a brand new headset so I'm really curious as to how I sound. So if it sounds better, if it sounds worse, uh, let me know down in the comments section below and I'd really like to hear your guys' feedback on it. Okay, so before we get into some of the action from the random matchup we had against Elite Gaming, uh, we have a couple things I just wanna share with you guys uh, before one of them ends. And I'm sure from some of your other uh, favorite YouTubers, you might or you know more than likely already saw this. But right here in the shop, guys, this Clash Aversary pack is absolutely, it's absolutely insane. I uh, can't put it in any other words. Keep in mind, obviously on, on, on my Clash of Clans, uh, it's 20 bucks, that's 20 US dollars, is what it costs normally uh, for gems. I mean, that's what, it, that's what it normally costs. So if we look right here, Check this out, it's 20 bucks, guys, uh, for 2,500 gems. So with this pack, you still pay $25, or you still, you still pay $20 for 2,500 gems, but in addition to that, you get 10 million elixir, 10 million gold, and the most precious one is 150K of DE. I'm sorry, guys, that is an absolute... I mean, that deal is just madness right there. So what we're going to go and do is we're going to go in and buy that and we'll be right back so you guys don't steal all my info. Okay, payment successful. So that's always good news. Holy crap, guys. Look at that. Look at the loot right here. We got 15 million gold. We got 16 million elixir. 247,000. Uh, DE and we got gems. We got 3,400 gems now. That deal right there is oh so sweet. The other one right here, uh, if we click on this, okay, you can't really see it because the, the little notification. It, okay, there, just went away. This ends in seven days. Take advantage of this deal right here. I've already done it uh, on my village, on my main village. Uh, it's a one gem boost. So for one gem per elixir, or if you have um, seven mines and seven pumps, and you got the three DE drills, it's just one gem per one. So I already have all that gemmed up. So, I mean, for example, to boost three of your DE drills, it costs you three gems. I think normally it costs 30 per drill, I think, you know, just, just to put it into perspective. Amazing, amazing deals right uh, going on right now. And I'm not really sure what else is gonna unfold uh, for this uh, next week, but incredible, incredible deals. Okay, now, so we got all that, uh, we got all that out of the way. Now we're gonna go to our war log. Looking a little better, looking a little better. Have pulled a few farm wars, but not this time. We had a random match, guys, against Elite Gaming, getting the victory 114 to 108. Full disclosure, we did have two, uh, two Town Hall 10 advantage over them. The, uh, the Town Hall 11s were the same. I don't even know what the breakdown was. I, I didn't even dive in uh, that deep into it but we did have two more Town Hall 10s. Um, but regardless, we still got the six-star victory. So, I mean, this war compared to the JF war, I mean, it literally was night and day in the JF war. If you guys saw that video, I think we were hitting it like 30%. Our Town Hall 9s completely shit the bed. And then you have this war where our Town Hall 9s are hitting at 70%, 70% plus. So I don't know what was in the water in FFS, but I hope that this uh, momentum continues going into uh, week one in CWL Invite. And this war, I mean, we just brought it, guys. I mean, you'd think we'd perform better in an arranged war versus a random matchup. But, I mean, just to give, I mean, just look at this, guys. We had six Town, six town Hall 11s. Not a single fail, guys. I mean, uh, went 100% on dips. We had all kinds of scouts. Uh, Last I checked, we had three Town Hall 9s that were not cleared, but we had like 14 hits uh, in order to get it done. We did have three 10v10s as well. 
So we just absolutely brought it. Uh, where they fell short, we had three 10v10s. I believe they had four. So th their 10v10 game was on point. But right here, they did have a few um, unsuccessful dips. And they were not, uh, and we were able to double all of their Town Hall 11s with our Town Hall 10s. Uh, they left um, Rio up. I think one of these, they had to bring in one of their 11s to double one of our 11s. So obviously not the best war for elite gaming, but they have been red hot lately. They were on a six war win streak um, before we matched them. And I'm very proud of our guys for really bringing it and not only bringing it, but bringing it in a midweek war. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and check out a few attacks for you guys uh, that came from this. I really hope that my new mic sounds good because I would hate to have to I'd really hate to have to redo this. We're going to check out Divine Catalyst. Absolutely love that name. AKA uh, Ked. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of him doing it with one of my favorite attacks. That being the CB Mass Hog. I mean, just a classic old school attack. Not even bringing a jump. Just bringing wall breakers. Entering in here at about 3.30. Gollum down after the mortar shell. Uh, drops, brings in the wall breakers, just bringing in his heroes, uh, just a few wizards, does have a baby dragon down there uh, to assist with the funnel, as he does want his heroes to go in, where he's going to be meeting with the enemy clan castle, and it is going to be a lava hound, does have a poison for it, just to help with the pups, and to help the queen beat through it a little bit faster, and without any hesitation, once he saw that it was the hound, no hesitation, guys. Already set the defense funnel, and he's just bringing in his hogs. Did not wait. Again, bringing four heal spells, and he also has a max skelly spell donated that he's bringing along in his clan castle, and he's bringing the CC hogs. Uh, not bringing any bowlers. Just a classic old school kill squad. Just getting, just getting just getting enough value from that kill squad and just letting the hogs take over the rest of the base and i mean just has a, a archer tower in the expo left and it has an archer tower down there at six o'clock and this attack was sub two minutes guys so a really really good attack he has been favoring this attack lately i mean just swarming the base with so many hogs really really difficult uh to defend that attack so kudos um to Ked uh, smashing that Town Hall 9. So that's the only Town Hall 9 we're going to look at. Uh, there were a lot of other ones, um, but I, again, I don't want this video to go too long. And we did have some really, really good heavy hitter action. Uh, starting right here uh, with, where the hell is it? Right there with Jacob doing it with the Clone Bone, guys. Sma this attack right here, this attack right here, I'm sorry, guys, but it's absolutely smashing uh, low weight town hall tens. Um, this one being, I mean, off the top of my head, I imagine it's maybe a tier two, maybe a, a fully maxed tier two, uh, could be wrong. Um, you know, it, it's an 87 K for those of you watching this that don't know the tier system. Um, but I mean, this attack from 88 K and below or max tier three and below this attack is completely wrecking bases uh, Jacob does have the level three clone spell which is the new max level at town hall 10 starting off at the bottom left hand side of this base flooding it with dragons he did sui his AQ to pick up an AD uh, King down here just funneling all the trash right there and here comes the clone part right there on those last two air defenses uh, drops down his uh, a camp loon to clone where he ends up getting, I believe, six when it's level three. He gets six loons out of that as they're still uh, wreaking havoc on this base. And then bringing in a whole lot of loons. I believe he dropped eight loons um, over there at about one o'clock and just completely smashes this base, guys. And the clone loons are still up as well. As they do. I mean, they have the same HP. They have the same damage. You're picking up with that clone spell, although it costs... Uh, for spell space, you're picking up six more troops for the cost of literally nothing, especially if you clone the loon that's coming out of the clan castle. Again, just completely smash that base. Doing it, guys, with the clone bone. Amazing attack uh, to Jacob. That's two wars in a row now where we've gotten uh, one of these attacks under our belt. Okay, and as you guys saw from the thumbnail dragons of wrecking town hall tens 
um, Taz um, running turbo, he didn't do it with the clone bone, but doing with with doing it with dragons, nevertheless, uh, doing it uh, with a queen charge. And if you look at the value right here, where he can pick up all these air defenses um, from his archer queen, so uh, good base identification, taking advantage. Um, of those clumped up air defenses that are very easily accessible with wall breakers as you see I believe he brought 12 along with this attack and already broke down uh, the first layer of wall and from that compartment alone he can access both of these air defenses and he's just setting a nice funnel right here with just a couple archers and a wizard uh, again good base identification we did run this attack a couple times on this base, and we have Taz coming in and doing an amazing job cleaning it up. Uh, the two attacks before this, if I'm not mistaken, were time fails, um, but we were able to clean it up as you guys are about to see. And uh, you know, even though he hasn't started his drag his dragons yet. Uh, starting the funnel for his dragons nice and early as he just dropped one archer on this uh, elixir storage. So good eye right there and also saying a nice uh, funnel for his archer queen as he does have a wizard just taking out uh, the army camp and that barracks right there just to further assist her um, through the rest of this base to get to these air defenses right here. And any second now you guys are going to see the dragons uh, coming down. Here comes the double layer wall break right there there it goes and just misses it i miss that those wall breakers even caught a little bit of the splash as most of you may know healers do deal uh splash heal i guess that's not splash damage uh they caught a little bit of that but just we're just shy of popping that wall right there anyway here comes the drag loon portion uh dropped about six loons as well as um cc loons coming out of the clan castle in order to take out that inferno tower dragons under rage are just going to blow down that archer queen uh pretty much one shot her not going to be a big issue uh just has the queen tied up on some uh ground skellies right there so not gonna hurt the dragons a whole lot being ground skellies uh drops his last and final rage on that last pack of dragons down there at six o'clock archer queen uh again since he missed that wall was not able to get this air defense right here did drop a loon to just distract a few shots off of that air defense and the dragons are just going to power right through it. He still has, it's hard to say, I'd say he has, yeah, he's got about three dragons left up. And they're going to mow down that air defense. Amazing attack, amazing timing and patience um, by Taz on that. So two of our 10v10 guys uh, coming from dragons. I mean, we got a lot of diehard ground guys now starting to key up on how powerful uh, these new dragons are after this last um, buff that they got in this last update. Let's go ahead and check out our last 10v10 jumping up to number nine. Uh, we got Gooves, of course, we got Gooves doing it with the Sui Hero Lalo. And you guys are gonna see just an amazing uh, air attack coming from Gooves right here where he's just going to be suiciding his heroes um, to get some good value before he starts the Lalo portion, bringing 29 balloons. He's got two camp hounds and one hound going to be flying out of the clan castle. There, uh, the wall pops, um, hoping that his queen goes inside there to get that inferno tower. Um, and she's going to take out that archer tower and under ability, no problem. She's not only going to get the inferno tower over there at nine o'clock, but also pick up that air defense as she pops her, uh, as he pops her ability just in time. So just amazing entry right there. Um, picking up high value buildings being the inferno tower and the air defense, uh, just pretty much just with the cost of your heroes and a couple funneling troops. Okay, here comes the Lalo portion. All spells are going to be used on this Lalo um, over at 11 and at 1 o'clock drops down a pair of haste. Uh, does have all three of his hounds down on the map right now. Has a nice rage right in that core. Notice that rage is also covering uh, that enemy archer queen where he's also dropping a skeleton spell uh, to make sure that she goes down. Rage over the second and and final inferno tower 
Uh, those Rage Balloons also take out the fourth and final air defense. Nice heal spell catching damn near all the, the last air targeting defenses being the two Wizard Towers, the Expo, and the Archer Tower. And just has all kinds of loons left uh, for that Archer Tower right there. And does have all kinds of minions and pups to help clean up uh, this base. And that uh, Lava Hound just watching this base get completely wrecked. Um, and this was damn near one of their top Town Hall 10s uh, on the map, obviously being fully maxed. Amazing attack uh, to Gooves. Never fails uh, to surprise the clan on his, uh, uh, his attacking ability. Okay, so I do want to show you guys one dip. I want to show you guys one dirty dip. Uh, which one is it? Is it this one? Damn. Which, which one was it? Okay, we're just going to do it this way. Well, I want to make sure I show you guys the right one. Being a fresh hit right here, we got Wen on his Town Hall 11. Wait till you guys see this attack uh, from Wen. I know we were used to seeing a lot of spam attacks as, you know, there's not a lot of moving parts, not a lot of things that can go wrong as far as doing a spam attack. But when you find a weakness in a base, again, this being a fresh hit, guys, he did this, I think, in the first just the first couple hours of war, you guys are gonna see when completely wreck this base and damn near everything survives. Uh, just good execution, suiciding his queen over there at about 11 o'clock, uh, just taking out um, some high value uh, defense buildings and also helping not only the kill squad, but also the hogs, this being a hog attack. And just doing it with a CB entry, bringing two jumps, and bringing, I think he had 12 bowlers uh, that he's bringing with his attack. He does have hogs that are going to be coming out of the CC. Uh, Warden down, going to pop that ability just in time as his troops were making way uh, to not only both of the bomb towers, but also that inferno tower. Wasting no time, not waiting for his kill squad to die as the kill squad is still up, distracting all those defenses, flooding this base with over 20 hogs, guys, with over 20 hogs. Um, notice he does have that heal spell down, followed up by that freeze, catching a couple defenses, and his last heal spell covering every last remaining defense on the base. Look at this, guys. He's got bowlers left. He's got his uh, Grand Warden still up. He did suicide his uh, queen, so obviously she went down. And this attack, if you look back, was uh, lasted a minute and a half, guys, about a minute and 35 seconds. Don't even think he lost a hog. Amazing execution and just an all around good war. And I'm glad that we were able to, to perform at this level, especially uh, leading up to Invite, which is going down this weekend. Our first war, uh, for those of you watching this that don't know, is going to be against a very strong uh, North Remembers. So very, very excited, and I want to give a big shout out to everybody at Forge from Steel uh, for showing up to this war. And, you know, and it being a midweek, you know, random matchup, our nines, our, our 10v11 game, our 10v10 game, obviously our dip game going 100%. So big shout out to all you guys, and I'm really glad that we we're able to get this victory walking away. 114 to 108. I also want to take this uh, moment to wish Elite Gaming the best of luck in their invite season. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video as always and the content that I'm putting out uh, for all you guys. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let me know how I sound, if I sound better, the same, or worse. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys um, think uh, with this new headset I got. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS. And I'll see you in the very next video.